Valentine's Day, the first fruit on record in the Garden of Eden, as we all know. And kitchen scientist Dan Kohler is here to tell us how this forbidden fruit flourished and what to look for at the market. And if you say I was in the Garden of Eden, I'm going to smack. I know him. No. <laughs> <laughs> Christina you know was there. Say that. Christina was there. Okay, <laughs> welcome, Dan. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Dan. No, so <laughs> apples hold a very special place for us culturally, right? We, we use apples as a symbol of respect for teachers. We give them an apple. We say somebody is the apple of our eye, which means we love them, right? Or And we say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So apples have, have held a really major uh, role in, in our world, in literature, and sort of in our minds, right? And it's because they, they date back very far. All the way back to the Romans, we have examples of them growing 25 varieties of apples in Roman times already. And the amount of apples that you can find today is astounding. There are 7,500 varieties of apples grown around the world. No way. That's okay. not true. 7,500 yeah. varieties. Okay, so wait. If there are 7,500 varieties, why do we only have five in the supermarket? Right. All right, so let me break that down. So there's 7,500 that are grown. 2,500 are grown in this country, and only 100 of those are grown commercially, right? So, and even of the ones that are grown commercially, each farmer is going to get to pick which ones they're growing. So your your market might not have all 100 varieties, but they have the best five the six. best way to find the best way to find new varieties of, of apples is to go to farmers markets and check out your farmers and ask them what they're growing because every farmer is going to have a different collection of apples. Okay. And apples are all mutants. This is the best part about them. What does that mean? They're mutants. mutants. Yes. Yeah, so you see. The way we find genetic defects, so when you grow an apple tree, it starts growing, and then, and then all of a sudden you notice, oh, that one's prettier, right? That one, that one is more red than the others. And that red might be a genetic defect. It's a mutant of the bunch. Maybe all of the apples were sort of mottled yellow. So this is the story of the Red Delicious. Jesse Hyatt, a farmer in the 1870s, found this tree growing in his, in his orchard. It was, he chopped it down, was resilient, it grew back. He said, well, maybe yeah. I should let it grow. It had this really pretty red apple with a little bit of a yellow blush. So he started growing it, and then the Stark family bought this tree from him. And so they started marketing what they called the Red Stark Apple, and it became the Red Delicious delicious apple as we know it and over decades they started selecting each mutant that was redder than the last so they were I only planting the ones that had this genetic defect that were even more red and consequently over time we developed an apple that has a perfect shape and really perfect red color but no flavor. No flavor. So you can taste you can taste your red delicious. Yeah. Now that's the red one on the end. So that's what happens genetically when we start to prize shape, structure and color we lose flavor, we lose texture. Because when you're talking about genetics, basically you have a fistful of cash and you can spend it only in a couple of areas. Texture, flavor, color, shape. If you spend it all on shape and color, you don't have any cash left to spend on, on structure and uh, wow. flavor. So I like moving, the green apples, they're sour. Ah, uh, they are. So moving on down the line, we have the Granny Smith, which is one of my favorites. It's a very unique apple. There are actually a very few mm. totally green apples on the shelves these days, right? Mm -hmm. And we know that flavor because it's tart, mm -hmm. and we use it for making candied apples because it matches that sweetness very well. It comes from the same time period as the Red Delicious. It comes from the 1870s. Maria Ann Smith in Australia, there really was a Granny Smith. Mm -hmm. Really? Wow. Yes. She had been testing most there apples. There she is, there right she there. Is. There she is. Most Christina of the took that picture, actually. <laughs> Oh, Most geez, of the 2,500 <laughs> varieties of apples are crab apples. So she was testing apples in her, in her kitchen, trying to find which would make a good pie, and she was chucking the bad ones out the window. Well, the next season, she realized there was this pretty tree growing outside of her kitchen window, and guess what it had? It had this green fruit, which was totally different from the apples she had cut open because the seeds of every apple will produce a tree that is completely different than the apple they came from. How is it? Think about that. The seeds are not the apple that you're eating right now. It's just like children. Right? So two parents, they share yeah. their genetic code, and the child is not the same as either of them. It's not Clearly. the same, right? <laughs> I don't know who the parent of my kid is because he's So that's me. the same thing with apples. These seeds are children. They will not be the exact same plant. Wow, so that's we, amazing. The Harry. way we grow apples then is to graft. So you take, you take a small cutting from a tree that you like and you graft it onto a more established tree so that you can keep growing the same fruit. Another reason for a glue gun we right there. We actually plant <laughs> apple seeds. Now moving on down the line, we have what we're getting to. My favorite apples mm. are the modeled apples. So we're moving into Fuji, we're moving into Gala, and we're moving Fuji. into, you can move the last Fuji one. Fuji makes some great this juice. This is the Honeycrisp. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's my favorite. favorite. Uh, it's uh, everyone's okay. favorite right now. The Honeycrisp yes. is actually an invention of the University of Minnesota. Apples are inventions well, these so. days because that's they're so reliant on genetic behavior. We have horticulturists who are crossbreeding and hybridizing apples all across America. We've got three apple labs in America, and they are after the development of the newest apple, right? So they're looking for something that has the perfect texture, the perfect flavor, and maybe some perfect color. But they're leaving behind these solid colors 
so that they can put more energy, spend more of that genetic cash in flavor and in texture. So the Honeycrisp, consequently, has tons of juice, is yeah. very sweet, yeah. and also is very crisp, right? Mm. You bite into it, it's not mealy, it's not soft mm. at all, because it's got very solid cell walls. I like to mix the best juice, too. Yes. Mm. Is there one that's healthier than the other? You know, apples pretty much, you know, Compare yes. They're, apple they're, they're, apple? Yeah, comparing <laughs> apple to apple, there's definitely some variation between, but but it, we're talking variation between it's small. Right. So it's, apples are good for you. We're gonna share snack. more information at uh, renegadekitchen.com. Mm. I find this is fascinating by the way that is so smart also on our pinterest page when we do come back though so ken is going to shift things for us join me in the front we're making warning signs for halloween you better watch out they're coming